so this is going to be a review of the 2012 released biology EOC and I'm going to go kind of quickly in the video because you can pause it uh, anytime you need to if you need to pause it or rewind it or whatever but I don't want the video to be like an hour long so I'm going to go kind of quickly Alright, so these are the sample questions. I don't actually think you have sample questions anymore because it's all online, but there they are. Uh, remember that the mitochondria makes ATP. So if you add mitochondria or remove mitochondria, you're affecting cellular respiration and ATP production. Um, as just vocabulary, zygote is a fertilized egg. Um, so the reason that we can get multiple um, different kinds of cells from a zygote is differentiation. Uh, homeostasis is the maintaining of the internal environment. Everything your body does to, from sweating to shivering, uh, yawning, uh, all of these things are to maintain homeostasis. Okay. Uh, remember the interphase is the phase of the cell where it grows uh, it replicates its DNA and gets ready for mitosis. During interphase, the cell is doing its cell things. Uh, number, so, and then prophase, the chromosomes form, then they line up in metaphase, they split in anaphase, telophase, the nuclei, the nucleus reforms and move apart, and cytokinesis is when the cell actually divides. Um, make sure you know what autotrophs and heterotrophs are. Uh, competition is, of course, competing for resources. Predator and prey, I hope, is self-explanatory. Uh, self uh, symbiosis, there are three types of symbiosis. They are not all good. So uh, stop saying things are symbiotic just because you're together. It's not always a good thing. Mutualism, they both benefit. This is the kind of symbiosis people usually talk about. Uh, commensalism is a form of symbiosis where one thing benefits and the other is unaffected. Think about a bird following a buffalo and eating the insects in the tracks of the buffalo. The buffalo doesn't care, it's not affected, but the bird benefits by following the buffalo. Parasitism, one organism benefits by harming the host. Think about ticks and fleas and heartworms and tapeworms and stuff, all right? So the answer to this one uh, was A. Uh, let's see here. Human population growth since the Industrial Revolution has been exponential. Um, when I was in high school, there were like 4 billion people on Earth, and we're getting ready to reach 8 billion now. And that's just been years ago. All right, number eight. Um, you would report stranding because you, biologists can learn from that stranding. They can learn why the animal stranded itself, so forth and so on. Uh, number nine, all right. The important thing with questions like number nine is you've got to pay attention to what you are given and what you need to produce. This question is asking you, it's giving you DNA and it's asking for DNA, so you just have to make the complementary strand. Remember the A always bonds to T and C always bonds to G. Um, remember the central dogma of biology, DNA, RNA, protein, okay? Um, meiosis, mitosis produces a clone. It produces two clones of the original cell. Meiosis produces four haploid cells. Uh, those haploid cells come together to form a zygote with a normal number of chromosomes. Um, the key to survival of any species is variation. Um, no species is going to survive indefinitely without variation. Um, and the best way to get variation is sexual reproduction. All right. Um, you can read these for yourself. Just pause if you need to. Uh, number 14, the example there of treating a disease with a transgenic organism would be like bacteria programmed to make human insulin. 
Um, remember the mnemonic device uh, kings play chess on funny green squares. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. The scientific name of an organism is made up of the genus and the species. The genus is capitalized, the species is not. Um, nomenclature for your vocabulary list is a system of naming things. Uh, look at number 18. You need to know what all four of those macromolecules are and what their functions are. Uh, vocabulary, monomer and polymer. Monomer is the building blocks. Polymer is the long chain made of those building blocks. Uh, if you look at number 19, all four answer choices are true statements. I would make sure I knew those four true statements. The answer is A, but all four of them are true and useful for studying. Uh, number 20, aerobic respiration uh, uses oxygen to be more efficient and produces more ATP. Anaerobic does not use oxygen and it is less efficient and produces less ATP. There's two forms, lactic acid fermentation that happens in your muscles and when they don't get enough oxygen and alcoholic fermentation that happens in um, beer and wine production. It also happens in bread dough. Um, so here we have a plant cell. Uh, the first thing I would do on this, on my scratch paper, is I'd list the numbers one, two, three, four. I would identify each one, and I would um, decide whether or not they are in plant cells, animal cells, or both. Number two is a little tricky because that's the central vacuole, and it animal cells do have vacuoles, but they don't have a central vacuole. However, the chloroplast only occurs in plant cells, so that is the best answer. Um, I would make sure to look up hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic. You will probably have a, at least one or two questions about those. Uh, so you can pause here and go through the notes. Um, you can pause here, read through the questions. Um, and remember, you're not trying to memorize the questions. You are trying to be able to explain why the answer is the answer. And for example, number 27, um, you've already got notes on that. So you don't need to write anything more. You just need to be able to explain why that's the answer. Uh, number 25, um, dancing, singing a song, probably trying to attract a mate. If an animal you know, like if you see a scared cat, they arch their back and their fur stands up. That's a threat display. They're trying to look big and scary. So they're trying to scare something away. Um, coal contains sulfur compounds that combine with H2O in the uh, atmosphere and they form hydro, uh, sulfuric acid. And that sulfuric acid comes down in the rain and we have acid rain. Um, so that's, that's why the answer is acid rain. Uh, number 29, notice that they give you DNA, but they're asking for RNA. So you have to transcribe from DNA to RNA. Um, remember that when you go from DNA to RNA, C always bonds to G, G always bonds to C. A will bond to U, and T will bond to A. Um, all right, so here what you have to remember is this is your first base, right? This is your second base, and this is your third base. So, for example, if you're going to do U, 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 you would start here, U, and then you come U, and then you find U over here, and you come over, and there's U, U, U. If you wanted U, C, A, you'd start here with U, and you'd go over to C, so it's somewhere in here. And you find A is the third one down, so there's UCA, serene. All right. Um, so this one, you had a sex-linked trait of short wings, which is recessive on fruit flies, and the answer is B. Uh, number 33, we have a baby, but we're not sure which parents the baby belongs to. So we do a DNA fingerprint of the s suspected parents and the baby, and we compare them. And if we look at couple X, 
every gene the baby has can be found in one of the two parents. So couple X is the most likely parents of the baby. Uh, let's see here. Remember, a plasmid is a circular piece of DNA that we can insert into bacteria. Um, and then the bacteria follow that DNA and make things for us like insulin. All right, so you can read through these. Uh, number 37, if we look at one and two, they're kind of close together, but evolutionarily, they're still kind of far apart. Um, if we look at uh, five and six, they are on the same branch and relatively close together, so they are the most closely related, okay? Um, if we looked at, say, uh, six and three, they might be the most distantly related because they're the farthest apart. Uh, this shows evolutionarily uh, histories, in this case based on amino acids um, uh, in the proteins. Uh, which type of molecule do quills use for energy storage and insulation? Fat. It's, they call it blubber, uh, but it's, it's fat. Uh, 39. Enzymes help break down things or put things together. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions. Number 40. Active transport uses ATP. Passive transport doesn't. Uh, eukaryotes have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. You, uh, prokaryotes do not, but what makes them similar is all cells have DNA, all cells have ribosomes, all cells have a cell membrane. Uh, you can read through these on your own. Um, ye flagella and cilia are both used for movement, that's why 44, the answer is C. Um, you can read through these on your own. 48, all right, I don't see anything super outrageous. Remember, sexual reproduction recombines DNA from the parents and makes a totally new offspring. Um, asexual reproduction produces a copy of the parent, all right? Um, since asexual reproduction produces a copy, there will be no independent assortment. That only happens in sexual reproduction. Um, number 53, the comparing DNA, you would do that with the DNA fingerprint. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, so this is a phylogenetic tree. Again, it shows evolutionary uh, relationships. Um, this case, though, we're looking for the most genetic differences. So we're looking for the ones that are probably the farthest apart. And in this case, given the answer choices we have, mollusk and arthropods are the farthest apart. So they are the they would have the most genetic differences. Um, these you can read through, and that's it. All right, so. I hope this helps. Good luck on your EOC.